Okay, looks like we're live. Hey everyone, uh, my name's Colin and I'm the newish head of marketing here at uh, FreeWrite. I'll turn off my uh, stream so you don't get the double uh, the feedback there. So i um, really excited to be with you today and to uh, host our first 2022 AMA with our co-founder and CEO, Adam Lieb. We've been sourcing uh, questions from the community and uh, that'll help us get rolling, but we're also going to be taking questions through our chat. So over the next uh, 60 minutes or so, uh, if you've got questions and you haven't uh, sent them to our survey, just drop them in our uh, in the in the chat and we'll get to those. So uh, thanks for that. The topics we'll cover today, I, I started sorting them early and we've got topics from product, hardware, software, uh, syncing, uh, some pricing questions. Uh, obviously, we want to talk a little bit about alpha. And then uh, just general and customer service questions. So um, we'll be kind of taking those in order as we go through. Um, also, this is the first stream I've ever done. So you're going to have to bear with us. I didn't set it up in a way that we could have two people on stream at the same time. And so um, I'm going to be switching chairs and Adam's going to jump in. This is where he normally sits. I'm, he's going to jump in and answer questions for you. And I'll just be right off to the side and uh, uh, sending questions his way uh, audibly. So um, what I'd like to do is introduce Adam. Uh, for folks who uh, haven't met him yet, uh, Adam is our uh, FreeWrite co-founder and CEO. He's really spent his whole life uh, creating and designing. In 2014, he prototyped the first uh, FreeWrite. And thanks to crowdfunding and you, the community, uh, we're now a, a, a flourishing business. So um, thank you for that. Uh, prior to FreeWrite, Adam uh, studied mechanical engineering, uh, product design at MIT. And he's worked in various fields, ultimately, you know, coming around to consumer products. And he's had his hand in a couple different businesses, and um, this is certainly the most uh, successful and long, longest standing. So um, uh, uh, really excited to have him uh, uh, with us today. So without further ado, I'm going to step off and have Adam join us. Uh, the first question I'm going to have him answer to just kick us off is talk about what he's reading now and uh, what's on the desk behind us. Thanks, everyone. Hello. You might want to adjust your volume. I'm going to get a lot closer to the mic here. <laughs> um, I think Colin was afraid of the mic, but that's okay. All right. Do I even need this, my headset? Nobody's talking to me, so I guess not. Probably not. That's weird. Okay. Hi, everyone. How many people? We got 30 people live. Awesome. I'd love to see. Can people comment like where they're coming in from? City, town, state, country, planet. Love to see that. Maybe do some. There we go. Hi, Emily. Winter Springs, Florida. Simi Valley, Detroit, Buffalo, New York. Love it. Awesome, 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 awesome. So, yeah, we can get started here. Uh, thanks for that incredible introduction, Colin. That was uh, that was something. This is actually the second AMA I've done. We did one, gosh, it's been probably already a couple years. Um, and the first one went really well. So I am excited. I'm excited to be doing this. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get going here. First question that Colin asked me was about what, well, what book are you reading now and uh, what's on your desk? I'm actually, I'm currently reading the expanse series. I think I'm on the third book, um, which has been fun. I, I tend to read sci-fi most of the time. Um, and so, yeah, it's been awesome. And, uh, what's on my desk? I got a lot of stuff on the, I have several desks. You can see the, the one desk behind me is a sort of a workbench. I'll let it focus. Um, we've got some sort of like development free rights here. Uh, this black one, this is a, this shiny one is a one of a kind nickel plated uh, smart typewriter with black keys. You got a traveler, of course. Um, the posters in my back left corner, I think if depending on how you're seeing this, uh, Wear screwdrivers, of course. I actually do 
I mean, this is one of the places that I do work. So uh, that's what's on my desk. In front of me, let's actually talk about what's in front of me. Some fun stuff. I've got a Shinobi Tex keyboard. This says a lot about me. So I'm not even going to say what anything about it other than that's what I use. Tex Shinobi. Tex is the manufacturer. Shinobi is the keyboard. Um, look it up if you're interested. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Sure. Well, uh, so on the, on the first topic of product, uh, one of the questions we got was, um, you know, why does or how does free write affect people's writing style and habits? You know, and why is editing not something that you're supposed to do with it? So free write was designed from the very beginning to be part of a, a writing process, a writing philosophy where it, it's thought that it's actually better to separate the drafting process from the editing process. So it was always designed as to be a specific tool for that specific writing process. Um, <clears throat> so all of the design decisions that that were put into um, the Freerite products, now of which now which we have three, uh, were all thought about. Okay, how can we um, focus on the drafting process and quite literally? Um, optimize for writing productivity. And so anything that wasn't um, pushing the moving, pu pushing the writing writer forward, um, encouraging uh, getting more words out, we left off of the machine. And so that's, that's the philosophy. It's not, it, it, it's not even something, you know, it's not something that we invented. Uh, we heard from writers all around the world uh, that this is something that's taught in MFA programs. It's a very effective writing process. And so um, that's sort of, that's what captivated us at the very beginning and, um, you know, inspired the original product concept. And then, you know, the people spoke, I mean, many of you, if you've been following us for a while, uh, you know, spoke up in our very first uh, crowdfunding campaign in 2014. And we just wanted to deliver on that original experience. And I mean, thankfully, we've seen and heard from so many people since then that this not only does this writing process work, but these devices actually are doing what they are intended to do, which is increase daily word count, increase hourly word count, and and even more so help people um, enjoy the writing process again, which is, uh, one of the best, one of the best pieces of customer feedback we can possibly receive. So, um, that's, that's been awesome. So in your mind, how does that fundamentally differ from an iPad or some other, uh, you know, other devices that people are drafting on today? I think situation is incredibly important, uh, with anything you do. Uh, we, we tend to have our whole lives on our computers, our laptops, even our tablets now. And so when we when we sit down at our desk and look at our laptop, there is no clear indication of what we should be doing there other than anything that we could do, which now at this point is a lot, right? We can be on social media, we can be on email, we can be creating, we can be um, browsing photos, we can be doing research on YouTube, right? So I think there's a, a a situation that's created when you have a dedicated device that when you allow yourself to sort of um, put that device in an environment, it, it then triggers you to think of that as the tool for the job. And so when you sit down in front of a, a, a smart typewriter or a traveler, um, your brain knows that it's there for writing. And there's there's quite literally nothing else you can do with it. And so there's no distractions. Um, and, and maybe even more important, there's there's not even any temptation. I think one thing that that people may not may not realize is that that temptation, um, even just resisting temptation that you have while using a, a laptop or a, um, you know a, a fully fledged computer, that actually requires energy. And so you can be using that energy to resist temptation, or you could be using that energy to write your draft. Um, so we believe that you know it's much better to just focus. Great. Uh, a couple of questions about the product's uh, resilience. Uh, is there any water resistance for unexpected rain while writing outside? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> 
I would say they're not highly water resistant. I would be mindful of spilling water on them. Uh, as you can imagine, water and electronics are not the best of friends. Um, uh, yeah, I would be I would be mindful of that. Are, the, uh, are any free rights uh, drop or shock proof? Drop or shock proof. Uh, proof is a strong word. Um, shock proof. I mean, people, people use these things. I mean, we, we, <laughs> you know, people have, um, look, we have customers that have written over a million words on their devices. So they are designed to be used for a long time. Um, I would try not to drop them. They are still, again, a piece of sensitive electronics. There's, uh, mechanical parts. Uh, the electronics are going to be fine. Uh, but depending on how you drop it, you may smash the screen. You may smash the keyboard. Um, yeah, the, the the keyboards that we the, the key switches that we use are their lives are something like fifty million activations. So, you know, you're not going to wear out the key switches. Uh, they're they're meant to be used for a long time. And and you know, with the smart typewriter, we're talking. It has a, a die cast aluminum body. It's very tough. Can you print directly from the free write device? Um, no. So, you know, there was a lot of reasons for that. I, I think one of the things is that printing is a notoriously, uh, painful process. Uh, even on your computer, printing from it is, can be challenging. And I think we just didn't want to try to print from our limited device and give people a bad time. So instead of doing that, we... We focused on <clears throat> making sure that you can get your document as easily and as quickly as possible and as seamlessly as possible. So um, that's why it has Wi-Fi. That's why it has cloud syncing. You can uh, print from your phone. You can print from your computer. Um, there's still many options. It's just, yeah, it's one it's one step. But at least uh, we can let sort of the, the big guns focus on managing printers and things like that. So uh, let's transition actually into hardware. Um, are there any new models coming along? Um, will there be new models of any of the free rights anytime soon? Well, as I'm sure most, if not all of you know, we just launched our uh, third major product in the distraction-free line uh, called Freerite Alpha. Um, that is certainly our major focus right now on, on getting that through um, production. The the crowdfunding campaign is ending this week. So if you haven't heard of it, or if you are still thinking about it, you should definitely check it out. It's on Indiegogo. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we are very focused on alpha. We are always also constantly, um, you know, thinking about our current product lineup and how to improve them. But uh, we don't have any plans for like a another generation smart typewriter or another generation traveler um could they happen one day eventually i'm not going to say no but uh we're we're really happy sort of with the the performance and uh what been what we've been able to do with the products thus far so um look like our goal is to constantly be improving all of your experience or you know our customers experience and so um that's that's what we're going to do one thing that's holding me back from purchase is e-ink delay. Will that tech finally get any faster? Look, this is a major area of research. Um, we have spent a lot of time optimizing both sort of the, the, the control algorithms and the displays. Uh, yes, I, that, that is the answer. We're going to continue to work with e-ink we are you know they're one of our partners and they have been for a long time um <clears throat> the yeah e-ink technology is constantly being improved, and um you know i think you know as uh hc just wrote in the comments some people i think have seen some people talk about that as being an issue um but what we found is that it takes about 30 seconds to sort of get over that and 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 i think once you use the device, it's almost always a case of um, because of the way it's designed and how it's focused on the drafting process, um, it, it really isn't an issue. Um, 
we we have people that type 150 words per minute um, using these devices. And so um, I would I would suggest if you haven't uh, checking out Ian Bogos um, review in the Atlantic, and he he writes far more eloquently than I could ever write about what it's like using uh, the smart typewriter. We got a couple questions about the traveler. Um, I'll kind of batch these together. Um, would you ever consider adding a backlight to the pre-write traveler? And is there any plans for a Gen 2 traveler or a second traveler? Um, we certainly considered it, you know, when we, when we started the development process or even, I mean, before the development process, uh, the bottom line is that we, it, it adds to complexity. It adds to cost. Um, there are some pretty significant challenges. It also uses a fairly significant amount of battery life. And, um, in that super slim form factor of traveler, uh, the battery is smaller, and so we just wanted to be 100% focused on battery life performance and um, getting that product out as as uh, as as well as we could. Um, there were plenty of challenges with Traveler. It took a long time. It was, um, like I said, going from the smart typewriter. Uh, we purposely started making a product that had had space. And it wasn't, um, uh, it didn't bring all the challenges of making a laptop, whereas Traveler is a laptop. Uh, it has uh, all the peripherals of a laptop in many ways. It doesn't have a mouse, but it has a keyboard. It has uh, internal flash storage. It has RAM. It has uh, USB Type-C charging and data and um, has a display. And, and so like making a laptop is is quite difficult from scratch which is what traveler is and so we just had to we really focused on trying to get the core experience as as as, as good as it possibly could be um we have no plans at the moment to make a gen 2 and if we did would uh uh would it have a front light i i can't say so um you know i think the other thing with the the light is that the screen, the Eing screen is so good at reflecting ambient ambient light in a nice way that you really don't need so much light. And and for the for the few times where people do need light, there are always options to have external lights, um, like a task lamp, or uh, you know, we certainly had people uh, that wanted to, or sorry, we've certainly have people that use headlamps if they absolutely need to, but. Um, I think the point is like most of the time, even in relatively dimly lit rooms, uh, the contrast of the Ying screen is is sufficient. So um, yeah, I think this is just a case of making it as um, robust and sort of as simple as possible. Any uh, plans on a faster processor, either for the Traveler or Smart Typewriter? Um, Again, we don't have a, we don't have, um, we're not planning any new generations right now. If there was a new generation, I mean, I think all of those things we would investigate. Um, you know, part of the beauty of the devices is that they are purposely very simple. Um, and we, we very, very, we really didn't want to get into to this uh, race of, faster or um, slimmer or uh, I think those are the things that tend to be really challenging from, you know, as a small consumer electronics company. Um, so, yeah. How about uh, a couple of requests? Will, will you please come up with additional color options for the devices or will, be, will there be any color options or case collabs for the devices? Um, TBD. I think we've we've done uh, special and limited edition colors with the smart typewriter over the years, and those have always gotten great feedback. Um, will we do those with our other products and more? I, I honestly, I hope so. Um, yeah, they've they've been really fun to do. Um, they have their own challenges, uh, but yeah, they're fun. I you know I can't. Uh, not going to say anything right now about that, but mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, you have black key replacements for the, for the smart typewriter. Will you ever have them for the Traveler? So 
The issue with the Traveler is that the replacing the keycaps is not so simple. Um, they're not the same style. The whereas the keyboard on the Smart Typewriter is it's designed for the keycaps to sort of be taken on and off, um, or put on and taken off very easily with a little wire tool. So with Traveler, it's very easy to damage the little scissor switch mechanisms underneath it um, when trying to pull off the keycap. So um, short answer is no. Uh, we can't. We're not going to provide any um, sort of alternative keycaps for Traveler at the time. Okay, great. Um, let's turn our attention to uh, syncing and saving. Um, we have we had a couple questions around: Are the files saved on the device, or can they be saved to the cloud as well? And uh, uh, can these transfer to both Mac and Windows software for editing? Um, yeah, all 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 the devices always are saving to the device's internal storage. I think that's a really important thing. That sometimes it's not as obvious, and it's not as um, maybe we don't talk about it enough. But that's a really important thing to know. So the cloud is always used as a backup. Um, it's it's an important backup, and it, and it's thought of uh, very intentionally. But um, the devices were always intended to to work off grid because we know there are writers out there that want to go to the writing cabin. They want to be uh, literally in nature. They want to um, you know be as disconnected as possible. And of course, they should be able to write without thinking about where their documents are going. So. Um, <clears throat> the, the, all the documents on, on all of our products always save locally. And then the next time that you connect to Wi-Fi, they'll all sync up in the cloud. Uh, did I answer all those par yes. all parts of those question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. This one's a little, little, little cruel, but, uh, everyone hates <laughs> post box. Why keep making it part of the workflow? What does it actually do for us? Uh, I don't think everyone hates post box. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> And truthfully, it was designed to um, not be part of the workflow. Uh, Postbox was sort of the bare bones minimum of allowing people to do the things that are much easier to be done on a computer versus the device, such as uh, setting up the cloud services. Um, you can't really do that from the device. Uh, we needed a sort of a, a go-between to do the OAuth authentication. So the thing is, the really, you s answer the two questions on uh, Postbox doing, during the onboarding, um, which are what keyboard languages do you type in? And if you type in English only, then you don't have to, you can skip that. And um, the, the second one is, do you wanna connect to any cloud services? And if you do, let's say connect it to Dropbox, that's a one and done. Uh, thing, then literally you never need to use Postbox again, generally speaking. And so we always thought of sort of separating the settings and the configuration, um, all the things that you really only need to set once and are much better to be done on a computer, go through Postbox. Um, and it acts as this repository of your documents. Um, Thanks, thanks, uh, Gamma Games and uh, J, J Man Runner. <laughs> I, I, I think that it's like I said, it's it's a pretty simple tool, and um, yeah, I mean, we we hope that it's it's useful for people in a pinch, but also um, allows people to kind of just like do the simple interface or interfacing that they need with the uh, you know the cloud. Great. So we've got a couple feature requests in the syncing and saving area. Is there a way to edit a file on another machine, resave it on the cloud, and then have it update the file on the free write? Um, you can actually do that. So we have a move feature. This is one of our newish features where um, you can push documents down to a Gen 3 smart typewriter or a uh, traveler. Um, at the moment, it's still it has to, you can only push documents down that have been created within the uh, free write ecosystem. So that would mean if you wrote it on a device or on Sprinter, um, but that actually does work. And you know this is this is a really major focus of area for us. I mean, we hear you. I'd say if if there is one thing that people have been requesting since day one, it's some form of two-way syncing. Uh, the challenge is always that 
to do that well is actually very difficult. Um, there's so many opportunities to um, add frustration into the mix and also, um, you know, have merge conflicts and uh, potential for losing documents or not knowing what's what's getting overwritten. Um, so anyway, it, it's it's something that we have oh, have thought about for a long time. Um, if and when we do it, we want to make sure that it's a good experience. Will there ever be cross device sharing of files so that I can start working on one file on the Gen 3 and continue later on my Traveler? I just answered that question. That's right. Will we be able to uh, delete documents from the device without using cloud storage? I'd like to use the device completely offline and transfer my text files to PC manually versus USB. Uh, the, f the first part of that question is, yeah, you can use the document manager um, on Gen 3 Smart Typewriter or on Traveler to shred documents on your device without using the cloud. Um, so yes, you can't. Um, it's still not the case that if you plug it into a computer, deleting the uh, file while it's a mass storage device on your computer does not affect the device. Um, but you don't need to do that. You can just use the document manager on the devices themselves now. Great, thanks. So let's uh, let's pop over to software. Uh, are there any software updates in the works for FreeWrite? If so, what's incoming? Yeah, so uh, firmware is always um, you know it's always in process. Um, there's we we're you know we're getting feedback from you folks from customers all the time about bugs or um, just places that maybe we can improve the experience. And so um, those go into a queue, a development queue. We have um, three full-time uh, software developers that you know manage quite a few different software projects, but the firmware that's running on the devices is, is obviously a major portion of that. So uh, maybe just, it's actually maybe worth kind of expanding on that. Um, we... We now have the biggest software team we've ever had at, at three-ish. Um, uh, prior to that, we've had two and then one. Um, but the software landscape that runs the company is actually quite significant. So, you know, even if we don't include the various, you know, like our e-commerce store, let's exclude that. Um, but we have Postbox. We have um, our firmware uh, over-the-air system. Um, which is actually quite complex in itself, just to be able to uh, create those new firmware packages and deploy them um, over the internet to your devices. Um, that's all a custom system that we built and we manage. Um, there's the firmware, uh, the software and firmware that's running on the devices. And now that we have several generations of products and several products, um, all of those have to be managed. Um, we have... Uh, other management, internal management tools. We have uh, Postbox itself. Um, so there's there's quite a few. Uh, we have Sprinter. Um, I'm sure I'm not remembering everything, but there's there's quite a few. Uh, uh, yeah, quite a few software projects that are in sort of like maintenance and development and constant improvement. So. Gamma Games just asked the question about an API. We had that all, that question also come in through uh, through our survey. Um, it was mentioned a while back that um, we might have an API, and then there's no plans for an API. Can you kind of elaborate on on what the status is? Yeah, the, it's kind of an unfortunate story, but the API um, really was an SDK for the devices, and the SDK was released as part of a larger um, firmware release um, for the smart typewriter. This was, I think, all the way back in 2017. Problem was that the SDK got wrapped into this firmware. Um, it got wrapped into this larger firmware uh, update that was extremely buggy. And we ended up having to sort of roll back, uh, roll back from that. And the SDK sort of unfortunately died in that process. I mean, the reality is, Having an SDK um, is a nice idea, and I am certainly for it. it. The problem is it's it's almost an entire product in itself, and you have to have dedic 
developers dedicated just to constantly maintaining the SDK, providing documentation. Um, and unfortunately, there's just such a small overlap of our customers and developers. So while I like it as an idea, it's we're just too resource constrained to make it a priority right now. Um, maybe one day that'll change, but that's just sort of where we are right now. So I think the short answer is we don't have any plans to make an SDK available. Um, so yeah. Okay. Um, we have a couple of feature requests on software. Uh, can we get an update with font sizes in between the current ones? Like a few more options? I've personally found the small to be a little too small and the medium to be a little too big. Oh, a Goldilocks question. <laughs> um, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, uh, the first generation of the product didn't have any uh, font choices. I think, again, trying to strip back the product to um, just what is literally critical to the creative writing process. And then I think, you know, we were convinced um, really from an accessibility standpoint, like some people need larger fonts. I get it. We get it. Um, so we wanted to, to add that. Um, we made three. Some people don't mind having a really small font, but they want to, they like being able to see a lot more on their device. I think, you know, where it becomes a challenge is sort of offering every option. Uh, and that's just sort of not part of our um, DNA, but, you know, is three the perfect number? That's, that's a hard question to answer. So look, like, happy for you. Like, look, this is a message to everyone. Um, let us know. You know, if, if there's something that you feel strongly about and would like to see it, um, let us know right into hello at getfreewrite.com. And, uh, you know, one, be nice. And two, let us know why. Uh, that that actually does, we do read those messages. And even if they you don't see us um, responding with the firmware update that includes your changes, I mean, we are a small team um, and they do um, enter into the dialogue. So, uh yeah, that's that, that's the best thing I could say. Any thoughts on adding text to speech or spell check to free write devices? Text to speech and spell check. So again, this is this is like a really perfect example of things that we try to avoid because, um, well, text to speech is its own uh, very difficult problem, um, and it requires quite a lot of processing as well to do well. Uh, so while I don't have, like, I think some people think that because we make a tool that's like very specific, that that's some opinion on how other people like to write or other people's writing process. And that's just not the case. So if, if, if people want to walk down the street and dictate into their phone and then use that as their writing process, like, that's great. Use that. I think that's a, that's a perfectly amazing process. If that works for you, I think that's fantastic. Um, this, these devices are just not set up for that. They're just not the ideal tools. If we wanted to have something that had great, uh, speech to text, we would design something pretty different. Um, it would need a lot more processing power. It would be a lot smaller. Um, and it would be, yeah, just quite a bit different. So, you know, we're trying to not compromise the experience for people that want this dedicated tool for the purpose that we designed it for. And, um, you know, also acknowledging that there, there are other ways to, uh, to go about writing and that's totally fine. Um, on spell check, spell check, um, again, is not really important to the creative writing process. Uh, I've heard from people that, um, I've heard from many, many people that the squiggly lines drive them absolutely crazy and that for a lot of writers, they turn them off when they're in Microsoft Word or whatever it is. And so, yeah, it's just, you know, that's something that you can do afterwards. So no spell check. Let's uh, swing our attention to Alpha. Um, what was the inspiration for the new Alpha? And, um, you know, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I think should come as no surprise that we've uh we were of course inspired by the original alpha smart um we were the product as it uh the original smart typewriter that we launched and as a concept in 2014 that we called hemming uh we you know that the alpha smart came up then and it's been coming up um you know all the time so we know about the alpha smart <laughs> and we've always respected it i think it's 
as someone that has created a product, the idea that um, your product could live on past uh, the company is like such an incredible achievement. And so um, we just have, I personally have so much respect for that product, you know, even if uh, it was designed for an educational setting and now the writing community has taken it up as their writing tool. I think that's just like fantastic. So <clears throat> I think we were always inspired. Um, well, what I should say is the original Hemingway concept was actually not inspired by the Alpha Smart. It was inspired by distraction free writing software and what a modern hardware device would look like if it combined sort of a simplified writing experience with the best possible hardware for writing. That was the original concept. It was not ever to remake a typewriter or to make a more expensive Alpha Smart. That was never part of the equation. Um, however, understandably so, people started comparing that concept to other writing tools like the Alpha Smart or the Forte Writer or the TRS-80 or uh, lots of other uh, incredible writing tools that have come before us and, and continue. Um, and so, you know, I think with Alpha, we um, we want to provide products for people at a variety of price, price points. I think that's always been something that we like. Um, and I think now with Alpha, that's really, we've been able to sort of take a different approach. It uses an LCD instead of e-ink. It uses a microcontroller instead of a microprocessor. Um, it's just a much, much more simple um, product, but it will still developer. It, sorry, it will still deliver on that really beautiful core distraction free writing experience that I think people, um, you know, know us for and and what has made us uh, successful. Um, so it's it has a mechanical keyboard, and of course we're going to sort of it's going to, it's going to connect to post box. And so you'll still get those benefits that you can't get with uh, repurposed alpha, alpha smart, excuse me. Um, but uh, it's, yeah, it's just a, it, I, I think um, we're just super excited about it. Uh, I don't know what else I can say. There's probably, there's a lot more I can say. I'm trying to think of like other, sure. uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll, ask, we'll ask a couple of questions that came in from the community and um, maybe a few more from the chat. So will it really have a hundred hour battery life? Yes. Will you be able to use the alpha entirely offline with a, without creating a post box account? Um, so you will be able to use alpha entirely offline. Um, will you be able to do that without ever having created a post box account? I think, um, yeah, I, sp I think you can. Will the Alpha uh, be allowed to directly interface with services like Google Drive, Dropbox, Microsoft Cloud, or will it have to route through uh, Postbox? Again, it has to route through Postbox. And there's there's technological reasons for that. Um, and, uh, you know, we look, part of what we're building here um, is not just a product or a product line, but is a platform. And so that with that type of thinking, that's a way that we can try to provide the most value to you. So um, just like every other company that's trying to, um, you know, really leverage their product ecosystem, I think we want to provide as much value as possible for people that are using our products. And if they use two, we should have even more value. Or if they're using, you know, Sprinter plus Traveler plus, you know, whatever it is, um, there should be extra things or extra sort of like bonuses that come with like working with products within the ecosystem. And so that's, that's always what we're trying to do. On the screen, why is the alpha screen so narrow? Um, how come the screen isn't bigger? It looks like there's more room. Um, we wanted to, uh, it's funny, we, you know, we've gotten a lot of comments on our screen sizes. Um, the, the e-ink displays in, a, in this, the Traveler and typewriter, um, a lot of people would say, you know, some, some objections would be like, well, why isn't it the size of an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper? And so we'd say, well, most people are not writing for an eight and a half, 11 sheet of paper. And not only that, but you don't need to see that much text because 
again, this tool, these tools are designed to be part of a specific writing process. Um, they're intentionally designed to be different than your laptop or tablet. So with Alpha, we were able to create a custom LCD screen. And that screen, um, we did make it wider. Uh, but we also wanted to make it fit within a certain form factor. And so that's really where we ended up going, how we ended up with the, the screen that it is. Do we know the minimum and maximum number of lines to that are allowed, uh, display allow at a time? The display will allow the time. I'm not sure. I I think three is the. It'll show three with the largest font size and six. I'm being uh, reminded. Um, that information is also in the Indiegogo page. Uh, maybe we should. Maybe we should drop that in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of questions about languages. Will there be multiple languages available on Traveler? Uh, I'm sorry, on Alpha, just like the Traveler. So. I think our current party line, um, I'll say this, this is something that we're working on. I think what we've promised in the Indiegogo is English international. Um, you know, this is, this is one of the compromises of going with a simpler electric, excuse me, electronic architecture. Um, with our other devices, we're able to leverage, uh, technology where, you know, rolling out a, uh, Neo Swiss, Neo Swiss Dvorak keyboard um, is a lot simpler than um, doing that on Alpha, where we effectively have to recreate all of those layouts ourselves. So, um, I want to say one day we will. We're, we're going to try our best to support as many languages as we possibly can. Um, but I'm at the moment. I'm not going to promise anything and say that uh, what's in the Indiegogo page, which I believe is only English International, is what we're promising people. Um, and and I think look, if you want to have that distraction free writing experience today, um, and you want to use other keyboard layouts, Traveler or Smart Typewriter is going to be your best bet. In the chat, Emily McLean has asked, uh, is Alpha more rugged for kids to use? That's a good question. Um, we want to make it as rugged as possible. Um, you know, we're still going through the development process. I think uh, I, I, we're going we're gonna to do our best. Should I check it? Should I check the chat and see if there's any other ones that are catching my eye here? I've been trying to keep on top of it. One of the questions, this is less about alpha specifically, but um, a question about uh, Chinese characters. Um, Chinese uh, characters, are uh, uh, any options for those uh, uh, in the future? Uh, where? And on the devices or, um, yeah. we do, we do support, I mean, we do have limited, I will say limited support of, uh, CJK Chinese, Japanese, and Korean, um, characters on traveler and smart typewriter. It is, um, I say limited because it is, um, those languages, supporting those languages is quite challenging for us, um, without having, uh, people that are literate in those languages on our team. So we have managed to get some of that working. Um, also inputting those characters are, it's, it's, it's a different process than using Roman characters or Latin characters, for example. So um, with alpha, I don't think we have any plans of supporting CJK languages, unfortunately. Um, like I said, there, there's input method editors, people in different parts of the world uh, input Chinese characters in different ways. Um, people in Taiwan do it differently than people in... Anyway, so uh, people of different ages have different uh, um, preferences. So it's just a very complicated uh, uh, area of development and most likely not something we're going to be able to support on Alpha. So we, uh, let's switch over to pr price. We had a couple of uh, questions come in around price. Um, I really like the product, but why is it, why is the price point so expensive? And do you have any plans to decrease the price of any of the products? The products are 
priced um, so that we can be a viable business and that people can buy them. Um, look, I think, unfortunately, like we live in this world where a lot of a lot of products are very low cost, um, but also um, it's hard to start a consumer electronics company, uh, especially when you're targeting a niche group of people. And so these are complicated products that require a lot of development. And um, for us to continue supporting you, uh, we have to somehow fund that. And so, you know, that's kind of a, you know, very capitalistic answer, but that is the answer. So, you know, I think, um, what, m look, there's also global macroeconomic factors, which I'm always shocked about. You know, you, you read these things in the news and you think, uh, oh, you know, that doesn't affect me, but, uh, it almost affects us immediately. So when people talk about chip supply chain issues, those are conversations that we're having with our factories on a regular basis. Um, we have parts that we've paid five dollars for that we now have to pay fifteen dollars for, or sometimes they'll try to charge us a hundred dollars. Um, these brokers, and so we have to unfortunately build those into the cost. Um, there's also situations where the parts are supposedly still available but they're on a 52 week lead time. So as you can probably imagine, um, ordering uh, parts with a 52 week lead time um, is very challenging for a small business. And um, that means that the alternative is you buy them what they call in the spot market, which is basically through a broker and the prices are crazy. So, you know, th these are the, some of the challenges that we have to deal with. Um, and, uh, you know, look like, Shipping, I mean, shipping during the pandemic went through the roof. Um, UPS, who is our main shipping partner, still hasn't uh, changed their peak demand uh, surcharge pricing. Um, so there's just a lot of things that go into um, why products cost what they cost. Ultimately, these are very, these are low volume um, boutique electronics and um we're trying to, you know, be in it for the long haul, which means, uh, you know, pricing them so that we can continue to support them. Great. Um, uh, this was a really fun question that came in. Uh, do you have any uh, stories from users of the device? Anything that you remember uh, hearing from them that uh, 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 that you really enjoyed? I mean, I we get. You know, as you guys can probably imagine, we have a uh, we use Slack at work, and all of the customer reviews um, actually go into a Slack channel, and so there's really no way for our team to miss them. Um, if you have one of our products and have purchased it, please leave us a review. Uh, we'd love it to be positive, of course, um, but we see a stream of reviews from people that just. Um, you know they're 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 glowing. I think uh, just on Monday, um, Amy wrote about the Hemingway edition. The, the Hemingway, it's my favorite gift of all time. It really is. I love it. And I think that's just like, I mean, I don't know if that's a story, but that those sentiments actually do affect us, and uh, the team reads it, and we just love hearing that kind of stuff. I think um, we always created this product to be a tool, not a toy. And we've seen over and over and heard over and over again that people are not just writing more with it, but really enjoying writing again. So th those are the kinds of things I just love hearing about. Um, we love seeing people using their devices out in the world. Um, I just, it's just, yeah, it's just, uh, it's amazing. There was one question I forgot to get to from Raymond. Um, how long do you plan to support Gen 2 for your writing? So Gen 2 is, we're not sending any more firmware updates to it. However, um, yeah, I mean, we're going to try and keep it working with Postbox as long as we exist. Um, there is no plans to have it stop. Great, great. Thanks, Thanks Adam.
Um, is there any more any more questions from the chat? Otherwise, I'm gonna hop on and uh, close this out. Let's see if I can find anything. Sure. Uh, I saw someone write about backspacing. One little tip that I have is that I actually, when I use our products, um, I rarely use backspace on its own. I almost always use new plus backspace because I found that um, it is challenging sometimes to use backspace and that I actually find it easier to just delete the whole word and retype the entire word. Um, so I would give that a shot if backspacing is, is frustrating to you. Um, stupid zombies. Thank you, stupid zombies. That's a who's, basic novel. Incredible. Who's a stupid zombie? That's how I delete too. Yes, HC. I, this is like, so I want to put this as a, um, as a configuration in Postbox so that you can make that default backspace behavior. Uh, we'll see if we we do it, but that's actually something that I've I've wanted to do for a long time. Um, 26th novel. Wow. Incredible stupid zombies. <laughs> um, I'm glad you like the word count milestone pins. Uh, we should probably let people know about them. They're pretty awesome. I have some here actually. Oh, I'm going to make a lot of noise. I've, I've earned a lot of pins, <laughs> but these are pretty great. So yeah, if you write a hundred thousand words on our device, you get, uh, you can get one of these pins. And if you write 500,000, you can get one of these. And if you are a real uh, word gangster, you get and write a million words, you can get a million word pin, which we have several people that have written a million plus words on our device. We actually have an interview with an author going out today who's written over a million words on his free write. So uh, check, uh, that's sign up for our email. And Marty Shannon. Marty Shannon. Yeah, Marty Shannon. So, um, and that's another thing, right? Like we love 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 hearing from people hey i'm using my device i'm i'm writing novels i'm writing screenplays i'm doing this like i've written books i've you know we absolutely just love hearing that and um and we're happy to promote your your stuff as well um that's what we're here for so uh if you've written a published book or published screenplay or uh, you know produce screenplay whatever um you know let us know Write to us at hello at and we'd love to promote your, your work. Um, do I see any other questions? I don't know. And folks, uh, NaNoWriMo, for folks that don't know about it, National Novel Writing Month starts on November 1st. Um, we are a sponsor and um, we've, we've been partner of theirs for a long time. Uh, there's a lot of overlap between our community and, and uh, folks that participate in NaNoWriMo. It's awesome seeing people use our devices for it. Um, we are working on um, some new stuff. So uh, stay tuned for some announcements before the first. But um, yeah, I think I think we'll call it. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump back in. Sure. Okay, so I guess I got to get closer to the mic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks, everyone. Really, uh, really appreciate this. Hey, we had some questions come in uh, that were uh, customer service related. So questions about what to do about a traveler that wasn't working or seeing some screen uh, lines in the screen. Uh, we're going to respond to those uh, through our hello email address. So uh, thanks for thanks for doing that. But if you do ever have any customer service questions, hello at getfreeright.com. That's the place to go. Uh, we've got a dedicated customer support a uh, person who's uh, standing by to help you out. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, uh, NaNoWriMo, like uh, Adam mentioned, uh, we've got a sponsorship uh, partnership with them. Uh, right now, there's uh, we are offering a special discount offer for participants in NaNoWriMo on our devices. Uh, that goes through the end of next week, through the start of NaNoWriMo. So definitely uh, check check your email and check their forums for our sponsor uh, uh, post about that. And... Um, I uh, just want to say thank you. Thanks for uh, being a really supportive community. Thanks for joining us today. And thanks for uh, sending in your questions. We're, we really uh, enjoyed this and uh, looking to do a few more of these over time. So um, we're going to save this and we'll have it available on our YouTube page for replay. And um, uh, yeah, uh, check, uh, uh, check us out again soon. So thanks everyone and uh, have a great day.